Hello, viewers. We welcome you again to another episode of Echoes from Nairac. My name remains Reverend Father Cornelius Abfebu Omonokwa, the Executive Secretary of Nairac. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic interreligious and intercultural dialogue. This topic is based on the fact that we were first human beings born in a particular culture before we embrace any of the religions. And of course you know that many of us we are either Christian or Muslims not because we chose to, but because that is what we met our parents doing. And we have eminent scholars who are going to discuss this topic with us today. So I welcome into the studio Alahaji Abubakar Inaboya, former director of Admin, Nigeria Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs and the founder and president of Asaf Kiev Foundation, which is an interfaith platform. Alaji Abubakar, you are welcome. Thank you very much. We also welcome to the studio Ijegban Daniel Oketa, who is the director general of Arise Nigeria Global Mission, advocacy for interfaith unity and special coexistence. My brother Daniel Luketa, you are welcome to the studio. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Now, we want to talk about interreligious and intercultural dialogue. Well, because of this, I would like to know uh, Daniel, where are you from? According to state um, geopolitical zone. Where are you from? Just your village. Government. Yeah, when you were growing up, did you grow up as a Christian or a pagan or a Muslim? As a Christian. Okay, that is good. You are welcome. Thank you, sir. Alaji Naboya, you are from where? I'm from it's a local government area, a do state. I do not we call it a do not. In state. What's the name of your village? The name of village is Ayoguri community. Okay, that's good. Uh, were you born a Muslim? I was born and brought up as a Muslim. When you were growing up, do you have some encounter with uh, Christians at all? You know, uh, when we grew up, when we were born, we have uh, Muslim and Christian. You know, the school school attended. A Muslim, a Christian. It was even a Christian school. What is the name of that school? St. George Grammar School. Now I am in the um, modern school. Okay. So the, virtually the, the, the Reverend Fathers were managing their school. It was a Catholic school managed by Reverend Fathers. Not even Muslim. And they could not convert you. You just to know that I was not perfect. When schools we are schools, do this. In that school, I yet. I remain steadfast as a Muslim, you know, in that school. That's good. Uh, in your upbringing, did you have serious encounter with Muslims? Very well, sir. Okay. The, I, had, I had particular friends, there are some of them who are in the army now in Nigeria. They will tell me about the Quran, we will sit together, discuss. I will tell them about the Bible. Then mm. sometimes we will say, okay, this one is. This is what we people are doing that we are not doing. This is the way we are doing it. But sometimes the same thing. So we'll discuss. There's one show we are We'll discuss the Quran. He was so free with me, and I was so free with him. So we're living together without problem. Well, in one of our episodes, His Eminence John Cardinal Nayekon pointed at tradition, culture, or let me call it African traditional religion as one of the basis for dialogue. Because 
it is our culture that gave us the language that we speak. Do you agree with that? That we need our tradition, our culture, to effectively dialogue with people of other religions? Very well. Because without dialogue, you cannot understand where the difference or the unity lies. So dialogue gives us the opportunity to know what we should do or what we should do together, individually or together. So the basis for dialogue gives us the opportunity to find peace in what we do. So every religious leader or traditional leader should make sure dialogue is an important aspect of living together in peace. Beautiful. You say you are from Benue. Yes, I'm Benue. Well, Benue has been known for a lot of clashes. Headers, farmers clash. Do you see any aspect of this that has to do with religion? Yes. Yes. How? Now, you, you already know we, we are the majority in Benue. We were there as a people operating. When you say we, what do you mean? Um, as, as human beings. You mean as Christians? Yes. You mean we Christians? We Christians. You are the majority. Yes. Okay. That is true. And we, we found out that there are other people of re other religions who wants to, or who for reason of trade, are also living amongst us, or wants to live among us. Now, you already know that there's always some discrepancies. You are not from here. I am from here. I was here before you. You are not supposed to be here. This is my land. That is exactly what is actually causing the problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Elaji Abubakar. How do you, how would you explain this? Because this is not really happening in your area. What I would want to ask, how would you explain the difference between settlers and indigenous. Um, it's a very. It's true that some communities, not all, you have those indigenous people who are with there. They claim they are called EDG. And the people that came up, they called them, addressed them as settlers. And it's true. Look at Abuja himself. Some people still claim that they are EDG of Abuja. They see you as a visitor, and the first government forced them to surrender to you, which is not correct because government, as far as Abuja is concerned, the government are taking over this land. There's nothing like EDG again. Okay? So if you go to some community, community you so these are the EDG, these are the settlers. If you go to, say for instance, if you go to North like Kano, you say you are a non EDG. No matter how long you stay there, they see you as a non EDG. This kind of process is not able to help us as a nation. It has never helped us because there's no No, let's just let's handle it piecemeal. Okay. Just I want to know. So for you, those who were born in a place are indigenous, right? Then who, those who came to settle. They call the settlers. They're the settlers. Now, you see, in civilized societies like the United States, in their if, you know, those when if you are born there. You are an indigen or you are a citizen. Yes. And today, you can still be a Nigerian and be a citizen, an American citizen, or you have a green card. In other words, like in the United States, you may be born in Atlanta, but you can be governor in California. Yes. Was there a time in Nigeria where a Northerner? can be a governor in the West? I don't think we are going to that level yet. Okay, we ha I think we had it before. I don't know. I don't think in I the, can't recall if it's yeah. a becoming a governor down in South. <clears throat> Maybe, I said, political disposition. I don't know. But what are this EDG kind of thing? You know? 
Now, let us assume that um, let us assume that this Notana yes. was born in Ileife. Okay. He has never been home at all. Then, but his place of origin is Sokoto. Because he has stayed there all his life, can he become the governor of Oyo State? Why not? Because if you are born, as you said, if you are born in a place after spending 40 years, you are, they still regard you as not digit. It means there's something wrong with us. You said, if I, if I have a wife, I have a child now, my wife has to okay, go and deliver in America. Automatically, mm -hmm. that child belongs, it's an American child. I have a dual citizenship. So I see no reason why somebody stayed, you no, know, born, born and brought up in Ohio State, who oh, no, and is qualified, military qualified, he cannot rise to become a governor of that state. That shows that we are not yet civilized. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. You know what we are trying to do, viewers? What we are just trying to do is to stimulate reactions to lead us to the main issue. Now, I want to go back to my brother, Daniel. Not just Benway now, globally. In terms of intercultural dialogue, what kind of methods can be used to bring the settlers and the indigenous together to understand themselves in a way and manner that there will be no clash. What, if, I, if I heard your question correctly, what method? Yeah, how can we bring these people together to live in peace and harmony? For example, when I was growing up, we have a lot with some Igbo people in my family. We live together. We go to farm together. We eat together. We do discriminate. You know, here, I would like to let you know immediately that there's what they call dialogue of life. We have already handled that in one of the episodes. So, the question is, how can we live together to accept each other, I don't want to say tolerate each other, in a way and manner that when there is clash. For example, look at just for example, the Ibirons and they have lived together most of their life. But something just come up and they now know that this one is Ibiron, this one is, uh, what's the name of the other tribes? Uh, this one is uh, Juku, this one is, you know, and so on and so forth. So, that's what we are saying. I can say, first, we must study each other, learn about each other. I was speaking to Tualagi before we came here. I said, yeah. I've studied the Quran, mm. the English version, yeah. because I was inquisitive. I wanted to know what they have known or what mm. they have said. Yeah. So I went in, I saw what some of the things they, they, they knew or understood. I grabbed them. It was they, they, so many, in fact, almost the same thing with the Bible. We had series of understanding almost the same way it was laid down in the Bible. In the Quran, so I saw that we were actually claiming the same thing. Maybe in different directions. So we must learn first about what you know, what I know. Because I can know everything and you can know everything. You know what I should know and I know what you should know. So we must learn about each other. Then we must come together. Call for dialogue session, platform. I'm very happy that NIREC is offering that kind of platform. For a long time, we haven't seen such official platform before. It was in existence, but I think it was something was wrong with it. But now it has come up to living up to that, to the expectation of giving us a platform everywhere you are, whether in Nigeria and even if you are outside um, this this vicinity or country, you can have such platform in your country globally. So let's have platforms to learn from each other, and then. Dialogue. Because we are talking about former platform. Yes, sir. Now, okay, I'm com let me come back to Elaji. You know, in every community, 
I keep referring to the show of Barano, who said traditionally in those days, when people come to settle in your area, you introduce the people to the traditional rulers, the council of elders. At least you know who is in your area, who have come temporarily to stay, and who have come permanently to stay. And the reason being that in every society, <laughs> man, no man, you know it's good, you know, you know the criminals. Yes, yes. And one of the reasons for violence today is because some people try to shield the criminals in their midst. So, the way it is now, Alaji, let us look at the village city. Is there any way we can bring the indigents and the settlers together a kind of formal way that will make them understand themselves more apart from the dialogue of life that they have attended the same school attended the same farm and so on and so forth is it because of what is happening in nigeria today you know like nobody would have thought that just can be what it is today the first time i wanted to travel to Canada. I didn't get visa. I said, well, let me go and enjoy winter in Joss. I went to Joss to spend holiday. And if I, if I man were too good care of me, and that was the first time I ate karkashi. You know? So is there any way we can build up our village communities to a point that there will be no need for these communal clashes? Yes, um, at the village level, as we have observed, we have to say we have the DG in the class. There is misconception. You no, know, look, that you, you are seeing no matter you are not part of us, you are seeing part not part of us. You no, know, misconception, but the fear that you can do and undo, and you are not being integrated formally or completely to that side. I think we have leaders. Leaders in this kind of situation is the duty. Rental players have duty to play as far as fostering unity. You no, know, bringing everybody together on board. We recognize you. All of us, we are stakeholders as far as this community is concerned. And the traditional players will always find a way to create a platform, bring everybody together, interact with them, you no, know, interface with them, assure them all of you, you are part and parcel of this community that we need you, everybody, to contribute to the unity and socio-economic development of that community. It's very important. Uh, uh, formerly or formerly nowadays, no, I don't think it's that kind of a remote village where you do have modern facilities. Who oh, no? Why have that kind of remote village? That may be from where I come from. So when you say village now, not that kind of village in the 60s, in the 40s, and villages have been facilities. The leaders are elected, educated. They know the meaning of life. They know the meaning of religion. So they should be able to use that their way of space. All of these leaders here, they, they are retired, civil servant. They have, they have traveled far and wide. They have knowledge about leadership, unity, you know, security. So we have to task all these leaders to find a way to bring all the stakeholders together to ensure that there's peace, there's unity, and every one of them has to contribute to If you go to Auch, take for instance Auch, you know, they do this city. I remember before the Civil War, the 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 the, the were there, you know, to their trade, peacefully making money. When the Civil War broke broke out, those Igbos had to abandon their everything and left. And left for them. And then the Civil War, they still came back again to this Auch community. And today they are there. Nobody bothered about it. Most you know you can you have a bit to offer. Nobody is going to discriminate that you you are not an indigi. You have something to offer as far as that community is concerned. Do your own. So in the place where you are born, where you are come, where we come from, I do not. Nobody borders. I don't think we have that kind of uh, clashes, community clash, no village, no or settlement. So the modern man has something to do. So the modern man has something to contribute to the growth and development of every country. So we should look at it, what 
is the cause of uh, uh, this disunity. It's just a messy uh, misconception. So I think we should be able to encourage leaders to do the needful to ensure that there is peace and progress in every community. Okay, and to add, sir, let me add something. When we talk about platform, in our organization, we, we are leading, for, we can pray together. We said we can pray together. As far as we believe in the supremacy of God Almighty, that for the purpose of peace and development of Nigeria, we can pray from our location. For example, we are setting, we are campaigning, we are advocating for Independence Day, on the Independence Day, that we can pray at the same time from everywhere we are by 12 noon and 12 midnight. That is the unity of mind and purpose. From wherever you are, it doesn't matter if you are a Muslim or you are a traditionalist, let us now dialogue in that way to God. Ask God, we want peace in Nigeria. It must not until I come to meet you or we gather in one location or in one place. No. We can do that from where we are. Yeah, you are, you are now taking us to the next um, <laughs> section of our conversation. Okay, now, interreligious dialogue. It's not just dialogue between Christian and Muslim. We have so many religious, right? Yes, sir. Now, you have your platform. Alaji, you have been a former director of admin in the Nigeria Supreme Council of Interreligious Dialogue. And Daniel, you are the director general of Arise Nigeria Global Mission. How does, you know, Daniel, how does Arise Nigeria Global Mission, does it have any relationship with interreligious dialogue? If yes, what is interreligious dialogue from your own perspective? Okay, from, um, from what I understand, interreligious and dialogue is interacting with people of different religious background or cultural background and art culture, just as you rightly said earlier, to achieve a common ground or purpose. A common ground or purpose. For example, for for the reason of peace, for the reason of sustainable development, for the reason of achieving a, a, a more united people and nation. We can't do without unity, no matter how small or little or how large we may be. So we believe that interreligious offers us an opportunity, dialogue offers us an opportunity to know the difference we have and the uniting point. Oops. Elijah. Mm. From your experience with the Nigeria Supreme Council, has this dialogue made any impact in our society? Yes. Um, we are not yet there, but we are making progress. If I recall about 10 years ago, there about whenever I want to do a program at the um, Catholic Center, remember the Catholic Center, we used to go for a free dialogue discussion. People, people look at Muslims at that time, you know, whenever we go there, people are, look, they are so curious, looking at us, ah, these are the terrorists, these are, you know, almost tell you, these are the terrorists, what are we here, you know? So they were not, they were not comfortable with us. We were not comfortable with you. Some of them were not comfortable with us. Some of the but, Christians? Yeah, we were yeah. committed there. Yeah. So, but, but now, things are changing. That's you know, uh -uh. if I go to the center anywhere now, they see you, they, 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 they accept me, that I, you know, but we are making progress. Actually, the Catholic group, which accept this interfaith who had a game. You know? Mm. But we are not yet there because we still need other Christian group to embrace this and you know, and that's why I have to commend uh, Narek for this kind of platform, you know, this of recent or particular this year, Narek has been able to wake up and organize a different group, different religious leaders and at least for the purpose of peaceful coexistence, unity and progress of this nation, which is very good. We have to commend the new leadership of 
Narek. But this fish will go down to, to some, I know, grassroots level. Yeah. Grassroot level. Because still we are moving. We are, we, we are progressing, <laughs> but we know that, as I said, we are not yet there. So we must commend the, 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 the effort that the Public Council, of Nigeria Supreme Council of Affairs, they are very much eager, committed to interfaith, dialogue, peace, unity, peace, and coexistence. This is our leader, our eminence, this is issues they are talking about every day, daily basis. So Christians need to understand Muslims, Muslims need to understand Christians so that we are one, you know, we are working towards the same goal. They are able to read, coexist, instead of so people create themselves in the name of religion. Mm -hmm. To add to what Alan just said, there, there, there's a point where there are some Christians, sorry to say, who may not want to know that they are good Muslims. And Father rightly said that some of us were born into it by reason, uh, by reason of um, Bed. beds, yeah. of uh, education. So, the best we can do is to understand each other. The, 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 for example, the Islam, which is and Christianity, is the basis of what we are talking about, especially in Nigeria. One, the Islams should convert a tradition uh, into knowing God. Christians are converting pagans. Say, don't worship idol. There is a God. That you should worship. Let us worship together. And for we have roots to the Abrahamic faith. For example, and I was asking him when we were discussing, I said, How beautiful is a man with one leg? How beautiful is a man with one leg? The man is not so beautiful. But the double leg gives a man a balance and a structure. We are we 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 came to, from the root of Abraham, the Abrahamic blessing. The same thing with the Islam. And we're trying to convert pagans and say, believe in God. There is a judgment day. There is God that you should, you should account to at, in life or after life. So what of people say, these are the two legs of the Abrahamic faith. We must work together if we must achieve global, national or global peace. He recite with us. And to, to tell you something, Nigeria, as it is, is the most balanced country of the Abrahamic faith. Name any other country I don't know that is as balanced as Nigeria with both Muslim or Islam and Christianity to move to move the globe or to establish peace. It is only Nigeria. We must leverage on that on that understanding, and that is why we are advocating for what we call the time redemption prayer. We say you can pray together with me, no matter what religion I practice, as far as I believe that there is God and I want peace, I want um, development, I want evil to be rooted out from Nigeria. Is that too hard to, to ask for? For pat from patriots? I don't think so. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Elijah Abubakar and uh, Daniel Oketa, I think it has been a wonderful time. We are rounding up now, and I hope that uh, when we invite you again, you will come around. So now, as we are rounding up, uh, would you please just for one minute give a message to the nation? What message you have for Nigeria, Christian and Muslims? The message I have is that we, Muslim, we believe that Islam as religious for peace. That in Islam, you have what could you call the idea? You have your religion, I'm a religion. That is your own practice, own. There's need, you know, to accept other people who may not agree or believe with you, believe in what you are doing. The Christian or the non Christian, we respect them, we have to respect them, what they are doing. So, because we have to create, it affects dialogue, it's, it's meant for peace. Share ideas together. Because of we have some misconception among us. By the time you come create a platform, you come and discuss. Everybody will be on the same level. So I encourage Narek to be doing this kind of 
you know, uh, activity, what they are doing. And I said, you're able to trickle down to the grassroots level. And I have to associate with my leader, Mr. Zokoto, and the preaching peace in Nigeria for us to move ahead, for us to develop. We need peace among the Christian, among the Muslim. We should come together. I think that's the essence of uh, NAREC. So that is, that, is, that is the objective of NAREC. That should, NAREC will bring the faith, all the different faith together. No, for the sake of peace, for the sake of unity of this country, because there's no way you can say, okay, do. You now, Reverend, tell me that I want to, you want to convert me to, to your side. It's not possible. Oh, I want to convert Reverend to my own side. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. But we can come together, meet at the same point, you know, interact, discuss, you know, and agree that we need to maintain peace among ourselves and including our follow followers. Out of ignorance, some people have you no know, those who kill themselves because of religion, because out of ignorance, they don't know. We need to educate them, we need to educate our followers that God created all of us for the purpose that you must account for your life, all the deeds in this life. Christian believe, you know, believe you have a judgment day. Muslim will have a day of kiyama, a day of judgment that you come account for your deeds in life. So since you have this share, this common uh, wish you able to fear God, know what to do, and to assure that as a Muslim, I should go to know the limit. As a Christian, know the limit. Thank you very much. So, Daniel, can you just one 30 seconds? The message to the nation. If you are in Nigeria or you are a Nigerian and you, you believe in God, I'd like to tell you that we need so much divine intervention in Nigeria. You may know what is happening, you may know it, or you may know so much. And we can only achieve it by being united to God. And that's why we are also inviting you to join us in prayer on the Independence Day at 12 midnight and at 12 noon. Pray for Nigeria, whether you are a Muslim or you are a Christian. That's what we refer to the time of prayer. prayer. Let us redeem Nigeria with God bless you. Thank you very much, uh, Alaji Abubakar Naboya and uh, Ijigba Dani Lokita for coming. We as we are rounding up this episode. We will be talking about interreligious and intercultural dialogue. There is still a lot we can talk about, but for time constraint, we may need to revisit this topic again when we bring experts who are sociologists and um, anthropologists to talk about this topic. But then, I wish you a very wonderful time and I ask that they will come your way again. And I ask Almighty God to bless and protect you both now and forever. Amen.